I'm here today on behalf of the International Conservation Fund of Canada to talk about the Kaipo project, which is uh, one of our flagship projects and how we're building on a successful model of large-scale conservation with Indigenous people, um, and then further on like how we're um, exploring Web3 uh, platforms and technologies um, with some folks who are actually here today. Um, so, you know, since we're all in the same room, some of you may have seen this figure already today. Um, it's not really a debate anymore whether or not the climate crisis is bound to happen or how, how far away it is. Um, it is here, that is certain. Um, deforestation, as you can see in this very stark uh, time lapse, is one of the key drivers. Um, this is uh, in Mato Grosso, Brazil, and that is a state in the Brazilian Amazon um, which is in the southeastern region of the Brazilian Amazon. Um, and at one point before all this, it had a lot, it was very full of primary rainforest, um, very pristine. However, most of that has been completely compromised, unfortunately. Um, however, not too far away from this, we have the Kayapo. So, defenders of the Amazon, who are they? Um, they are an indigenous group residing in southeastern, um, in the southeastern region of the Brazilian Amazon. Uh, they are 10,000 strong. Um, they have um, made waves over the last decades due to their, um, them surmounting the odds in the fight for their land. Um, after contact in the 1950s through to the 1960s, 1970s, um, before they had basically any legal support um, they, did, they were so successful in their fight that they actually were a major catalyst to Article 231 um, in the 1988 Brazilian Constitution, which basically legally demarcated and gave land um, to the indigenous. Um, and so they have this very like historic warrior culture um, and still they maintain that livelihood today. Um, however, despite that history of defiance, um, you can see this, uh, this, this deforestation and all of this loss, it is literally on their doorstep. They are on the forefront of all of this uh, forest loss that's happening, particularly in these south and eastern regions of the Amazon. Um, you can take a little closer look here. So this is like a very stark um, visual uh, between, you know, what the difference is between ratified, managed, protected land and everything that lays outside. So this is an aerial on one of the eastern fronts of their territory, and you can see the two main culprits of Amazon deforestation and Amazon destruction. So the first one being uh, clear cut uh, for cattle ranching. That's predominantly the number one, um, as well as a much more insidious practice, which is illegal gold mining. So you can see um, adjacent to that river, uh, you can see these illegal gold mining pits um, and the irony here is that that's actually called the Hio Fresco, which means like fresh river, and it's been rendered completely inert ecologically, um, and that's due to just the turmoil and, and upturn of gold sediment, and that completely reduces the uh, ecological activity in that river. So um, you can see, like, despite everything that's going on, they still maintain their land for only 10,000 within a 10 million hectare land, they remain successful. So, oh, to give you an idea, this is the size we're talking about. Um, it's, it's literally the size of a small country. Uh, I, because we were in South America, I actually wanted to do an overlay because this is a LATAM event, and this territory is not too far off of Ecuador even as an entire nation. Um, it's 1.6 billion tons of carbon. Um, and, you know, you might ask, okay, well, how is this possible? Like, how have they managed to do this with such few numbers? Um, and let's get into it. So, first and foremost, without the Kaipo, that land would be gone. Like, that's just an absolute fact, which is why so much of what we do at the Kaipo Project and every organization that's involved is giving the Kaipo equity and leadership um, with how we go about these project programs because um, we all know that the indigenous manage wild spaces, um, natural spaces better than anyone else. That's why 80% of the world's biodiversity is within indigenous territories globally. Um, so kind of going into this successful model, what does that look like? Um, 
we like to say that the three core pillars of the Kaipo project are um, institutional strengthening, territorial monitoring and um, surveillance, and sustainable uh, enterprise development. So within that, we have these also these high-level pillars as well. So first and foremost being the NGO Alliance. So we have a coalition of three Brazilian NGOs that are on the ground doing the work. They are working with the Kaipo. They have Kaipo staff. Um, they help administer funding, manage funding. Um, they also help um, give speed to uh, things like legal support and political mobilization, which we've been seeing huge demonstrations in places like Brasilia in the last two years with other ind indigenous groups um, actually getting themselves mobile, organizing, and, and creating, you know, um, demonstrations for change. Um, capacity for territorial monitoring and control. This is a big one that I'm going to get into in a minute. Um, development of economic autonomy. So we saw with Suriname, um, the Kaipo project is doing very similar things with Brazil Nut Exports um, and as well with Kumaru to sustainable brands and that money's going directly back to the Kaipo. It's going straight back into the villages um, so they can keep funding um, their own lives and livelihoods. And then finally, strengthening traditional indigenous culture and livelihood. So, um, for instance, with territorial monitoring and control, this is the Guard Post program. So, Kaipo project director um, Barb Zimmerman, she has spent probably the better half of a decade getting this program off the ground. Um, and it's been a, rad like a huge success. So, essentially what it is, is we have 13 uh, Guard Posts situated at key entry points to the territory and areas of high exposure. Um, these guard posts are manned by the Kaipo, they're operated by the Kaipo, they're led by the Kaipo. Um, this also brings funding in to their local communities as well. And the ensuing results have been huge. Um, illegal entry, especially by boat for things like net fishing, um, have dropped virtually by 100% in the last couple years. Uh, and this has allowed things like fish stocks to rebound completely to the point where um, we're even getting reports from towns outside of the territory in um, Brazil that, you know, these small frontier towns, their own marketplaces are doing better because of it with things like uh, fish trade. Um, so it's been a huge success. However, it is expensive. Um, it's about two million USD a year to fund this. So like all conservation organizations, we are looking to innovate and figure out new ways of fundraising. And I wanted to just make a clear note as well um, going, can I go back? Yes, I can. Everything within these pillars um, cannot function without outside investment. Uh, public funding and bilateral funding just does not work. Um, so basically all areas historically in the Kaipo region that have been compromised, especially to the east, they were ones that did not receive that monetary support. Um, and it is expensive defending and protecting 10 million hectares of primary forest. Um, so with that, new technologies, right? We're here to talk about Web3, what's happening there? Um, we're really, really excited to be working with Gainforce, trying to kick off this new pilot project um, with them uh, and what exactly that looks like. So there's tons of different project programs that are happening um, within the Kaipo uh, organizations and the coalition of organizations um, and getting into that. So with Gainforce, uh, we can see here on one of their modules, uh, their goal with the Kaipo project is to do a top-down um, transparency model, so starting from satellite imagery using machine learning and AI technology, and that trickles down all the way into uh, drone um, and field work as well. So going into that, at the field level, the Kaipo territory is teeming with wildlife. It's, it's incredible. So two of the species here, like for instance, I'm, I took all of these photos and I am by no means a wildlife photographer, if that puts in any sense. Um, we have the hyacinth macaw, endangered species, flourishing. Um, the spider monkey on the right, uh, absolutely in abundance as well because they have all of this land to work with. So um, I'm running out of time here, but more about the field data is the camera trapping project. So um, with the local village that we've been starting this program with in Kamoti Jam, we've been w working with um, a few Kaipo who you can see here. So Takak Nyoti, and two of his sons, Takak Nyore and Beb Kakoti. And they're, they're, they're leading right now. This project was started by Nat Knowles, um, who is my colleague. They are going out, they're monitoring the forests, they're collecting their own images, and this is part of 
the next generation. So the Kayapo, unlike their elders and ancestors, they don't have to physically fight for their land as much anymore, but they're adopting digital tools, camera, photo, video. They're starting to tell their own stories, social media, um, and it's really quite amazing to see. So with that, as an example with the camera trapping project, we're going out, they're learning how to use these tools, they're managing their own data, they're uploading their own footage, video, and we see a huge synergy with what Gainforce is trying to get off the ground with the uh, NF Trees project. So for instance, these are camera trapping results um, and it's quite amazing and it's very fun to do. Um, and so with the Gainforce fundraising model, we're hoping that we can have this as like that very personal element um, to creating these um, like token receipts, being um, a supporter of Gainforce and giving that full model of transparency um, and not only that, but impact. So yeah, we're really, really excited and I could talk to you guys all day about this. Um, and again, we need support. If you wanna learn more, kaipo.org. You can find us on socials as well um, and get involved. There's tons happening at the project right now. Um, and yeah, thank you all for giving me the time of day. Thank you.